the 12th grade um, session for mathematics. And uh, just want to remind everybody to uh, mute their mics and um, to type your questions in the chat. I'm Shauna Foster, and we have Mark Lavaco on the line. We also have our other math coaches, uh, Tracy McManus and Chris Roski. And uh, if there are anything, any things that uh, you forget to ask during this session and want to ask later, you can always email us. And my email is lfoster at wccusd.net, right behind me. I guess my camera needs to be closer. So anyway, we will get started. Uh, let's see. Oh, that might be a question for Chris. This is from Paul. Um, he's also, uh, this is Paul says he's on the Big Idea website and that's what he's using at Fairmont. Um, and he's trying, and he's having difficulty looking for videos to explain the math concepts for Big okay. Ideas. Go ahead, Hi, Chris. Paul. So Paul and I were going back and forth in a previous session a little bit about the ability to, to, I'm good, thank you, Paul, how are you? <laughs> uh, uh, the option to, first of all, let me just answer the previous question from Tuesday. The option to link, <laughs> great. Uh, the option to link uh, assignments from Big Ideas directly to Google Classroom is still there. It's still part of their platform. I had the same experience you had where I went to an, to an assignment and it didn't say that I could link it to Google Classroom. And I think it was because it was an assignment that I had already, that had already been assigned and the due date had already passed. I think that's the reason. So today I went to my teacher account. It's a friend of mine who's a teacher in this district. And um, I made a new assignment. And when I went to my assignment list, um, I could link, it had the option to link to Google Classroom. So that's still possible. Now, as far as videos go, because I know that's what you, that was your question from today, um, the videos that are that Big Ideas provides are just those ones that are like they start off the the unit. You know, they have those unit. They're kind of like STEM videos, um, which are pretty good. Some of them, but yeah, they don't really help explain the concepts. So, you know, I guess if I was going to look for some videos to explain concepts, I would go to some of the typical places like YouTube, or you could use some of, you know, you could send your students to Khan Academy to look at videos there. I mean, if you're using Khan Academy in coordination with big ideas, I mean, there's just and on you know there's there's videos for every every concept and topic at Khan Academy and man they're pretty good if you don't mind Sal Khan talking and talking and talking and talking anybody else have some ideas where can we find some good some good videos to link to concepts uh to link to concepts uh yeah even or even topics Khan, yeah Khan can be a little bit trying in terms of uh finding information learning about conceptual stuff behind it i think it's a lot of skills based focus however that's it's, it's always a good go-to um also considering actually doing a little mini video on your own phone camera and then uploading it to google classroom might be an option as well where you're actually working out some problems and talking about the concepts behind the problem as you're working it so that might be a, a, a fun experiment to try out is setting up uh, your phone to do a little video of you uh, doing some work. Yes, yeah, so someone mentioned Moby Max, and I, you know, that must be a good program. I've never checked it out, but people bring it up all the time. I should just open up a tab right now, Moby Max, because I always hear there's people who really like it, and I've never, I've never done it. Uh, it says fix learning gaps, Moby Max. Yeah, 
So who, let's see, who put that down there? Um, was it Lucia? Do you wanna, oh, it's $90, $90 for the assessment package, Tracy, for Moby Max? Yeah, I'm not sure what you get when when it's free, but I know that to get all of the assessment tools it offers, mm -hmm. um, it was ninety dollars when I looked at it the other day. Lucia, did you want to tell us a little more about that? No. Okay. Okay, and Susan O'Neill says mathbitsnotebook.com. Mathbits Notebook is a good, good basic info on geometry concepts. Okay. So, one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up again uh, that we're bringing up in every uh, office hours is our focus really is for finding content that doesn't cost anything. Uh, so that's why we're promoting uh, certain resources as opposed to others. We're also at a less less is more kind of mentality as well, that we don't wanna over throw a huge number of lists of resources. Uh, many, many teachers will be finding resources out there, but we don't want to have to have teachers use something that's free right now and then not be able to use it come September or October uh, when it actually costs money. Um, so something to keep in mind as you're as you're looking around for resources. So um, I don't oh Paul asked about grades for third trimester. Mark, any ideas about grades for third trimester? Uh, yes, I believe that the latest communication that's come out from the school district talks a little bit about third quarter grades. So I received some communication via email. So maybe check your email on that. Or you can go to the district website and there should be communications. I think it's almost daily now that they're posting things. And I believe there's some information around uh, third quarter grades for both primary and secondary schools. Okay, cool. So Lucia, I'm, I'm interested, what are you using um, for your, for your um, higher grade levels um, to give instruction? You could type it in the in the chat, or you can um, you can unmute your mic. Maybe she can't hear me. I don't know. I'll type it. Um, while you're doing that, I wanted to, well, oh, here we go. We got it. It's also possible that, it's also possible that she is, has stepped away from the meeting for a moment. That is true. <laughs> yeah. So um, let me ask um, Shauna and Mark, what are some things that you want to share with your secondary teachers at this time? Chris, uh, why don't I do, why don't I take over the screen? I want to show just a couple things. Uh, I want to show mm -hmm. the, the website as Great. well as the UTR uh, memo of understanding that came out as well as some survey results. So I'm going to go ahead and present right quick. So 
So first thing I want to show you guys is that the uh, district, uh, many of you have already gone to this page, but this is on the district website and it has all the e-learning information for you. If you go to teachers and you go to distance learning PD schedule, you can find what's left for today's PDs. And I believe that the ed tech coaches will be designing another calendar for the week that we get back from break. So this is where you can access different PDs and office hour meets. In addition, I wanna to go to the resources by content. And if you go to math, again, we have a comprehensive list, K through 12, of a variety of different support links that will get you started or give you helpful hints as to what you can do for a variety of different programs, both what we have for district approved curriculum, as well as uh, other curriculum that we uh, encourage. Oh, look, and there's our positive math mindset norms that we always wanna continue practicing. Some of these uh, in particular uh, may be of use for us, including the math classes about learning, not performing. Uh, we're we're de-emphasizing grades at this time. So uh, thinking about uh, what it's about, what, what schooling is about in terms of learning, as opposed to just getting the A, B, C, D, and F grade. The second thing I want to show you is part of the communication uh, that UTR sent out to teachers. Uh, if you haven't done so already, I recommend you check it out. Uh, the theory of action behind what, uh, what we're shooting for for distance learning is useful to consider as you're building your distance learning plans. In addition, uh, there is a great reminder of lesson design and some of the key pieces of lesson design that you not only do in your classroom, but as well we can continue practicing these things uh, in the etherwebs as well. So uh, having these four items as you're building your online lesson design uh, would be super helpful. And finally, I did want to show some of the results for that were that we got from the survey that we sent out last week uh, show you that how are we delivering how are, how are teachers delivering instruction to students this gives you an idea as to how instruction is being delivered as well as communication with students most teachers are doing Google Classroom at the secondary level, at least those that responded. And finally, about what percentage of your students are participating on a regular basis as well. Uh, it'll, it'll be a ramp up for students to start figuring out what learning is like at home and how to do all these online learning platforms as well. So it's gonna be a, a bit of a learning curve for them. And as well, we'll be, we have to keep in mind and be cognizant that there's a lot of stuff probably happening at homes as well that uh, may get in the way of, of, of learning. So we just need to be cognizant that there are of those things as we move forward in the next couple months. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the main things I wanted to show you guys and uh, I'll hand it over. Uh, I'm gonna be stepping out in a few moments for my next meeting, by the way, guys. Okay. Um, so for the secondary folks, last um, time we met, I couldn't quite get my Pearson Realize to work, but now it's now it is working. Um, I just wanted to show you um, how to um, monitor uh, student progress. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's see if I can get there. Oh, turn that off. That. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, when you sign into Pearson Realize, again, this is um, your um, home page and your programs on the left, classes in the middle and data on the right. Um, so one of the things that I'll do is just go right into, if I click on classes, so all of my classes show up here, right? And any assignments or anything that I want to assign, I can just assign it directly from a class or I can go into uh, the book um, and assign things from there. So um, I've been messing around with the geometry lately, so I'll just click on those assignments there. And let's have it load. Now, interesting, this was working like 10 minutes ago. Let's try it again. All right, well, let me close that out. Try it one more time. Um, get back into my Pearson Realize. All right, let's go from a, a different direction. This time I'm just gonna click on one of the uh, books one of my programs. So I clicked on geometry. There we go. All right. And so here I have my table of contents. Again, I can go down and I can see all of the topics are basically all of the chapters in the books and things that I can can assign. So I saw you were doing an interactive lesson on um, circles. Is that what you said, Lucia? So um, if I can find circles right here in, ch in chapter 10. So if I click there, and I can see um, my, the different lessons. I can open up any lesson that I want from here. And I don't know why it's going very slow today. Well, opening up the lesson basically gives you the teacher edition of um, the teacher and student pages of that particular lesson, uh, the example problems um, and practice problems and an assessment at the, at the bottom. I don't know why the Pearson platform doesn't wanna work for me this morning. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this. And I'm going to see if I can get back into it a little later before our session is over. All right. So I don't know why it doesn't want to work today. That's okay, Shauna. We're embracing the struggle at this time. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like it works when it wants to work. Right. Um, Chris, if you're available as well, there might be, uh, you said that there might be some uh, big ideas, things you want to share out. Yes, I certainly can do that if we have anybody here. Do we have anyone who's using big ideas? We only have a few folks left uh, who are with us. Only three. Three. We have more coaches than teachers at this time. Well, what we could do also is is we can show this, and again, it'll be the asynchronous learning. We can post okay, great, and then uh, and then others can check it out at other times. That's fantastic. So that's what I'll do. So um, let me share my screen here uh presenting now and i want to present a window and i want to present hold on a second uh, wait a second one second all learning uh, here it is yes 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 great wonderful okay hold on one second here sharing my screen presenting a window and it's this one that i want to show yes 
can you see my screen now? This is this is this is my clever screen mine because I have a teacher friend who has an account. But you can see that somewhere on here is big ideas. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Big ideas learning. And I click on that and the big ideas icon comes up. I mean the big ideas program comes up and we have our resources, assignments, and reports. What I was specifically looking at today was how to create an assignment and then link it to Google Classroom and Big Ideas, or that was the question we had on Tuesday. Uh, so if you click on assignments or create an assignment, I'm already there. Let me create a little assignment here. I would assign this. This is what looking very far ahead. So I'm gonna add this assignment and I'm gonna choose You've probably seen this, but you can choose all odd or even or none, or you can choose the problems. I'm just going to choose all the problems for now. There's only six problems. Give them a calculator. And then I think I'll just choose one student to scare because it's not a real lesson. I'll choose that first student there. Next. Uh, my start date, let's put it really far ahead, like a month from now. And my end date, I'll put it even farther ahead sometime in May. Okay, great. Uh, not a real assignment. Don't do this. Just a test. That way, if she gets it, she won't get freaked out. So uh, I'm going to assign this assignment and i'm going to assign it right there Jupe. and now i can see it right here this is the chapter 10 opener it says not a real assignment it's only assigned to one kid because i'm just testing it and if you go to actions right here and click on actions you can see there's a link right here for google classroom and if i click on that link it's going to open up is it going to open up my oh it's going to open up her google classroom yes Okay, so I would choose my choose her cloud. Look at all these. Okay, um, because her account is opened. I have a Google Classroom too, but obviously this is going to link to her Google Classroom. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to mess with her, with her, you know, with her work. But that's all you do. So you go click on there. It takes you straight to your Google Classroom, and then you can link these um, assignments that way. And that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, since I assigned this to some poor student, I'm actually going to delete it <laughs> so that that one student doesn't end up with this assignment. Did it work? Yes, fantastic. Okay, so there's a little guidance on how to um, how to use that, you know, how to link your big ideas lessons. That's for grades six, seven, and eight to your Google Classroom. Thank you. I'm also going to put in the chat that you've made some big ideas videos on our math website. And they can be found here in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. That's great. So any other specific questions that we can answer to the teachers that are here? Or how about if I ask teachers, teachers, I'm going to ask you a question. My question is, how are you able to, um, how are you able to check students' progress in this distance learning environment? Are you able to check check student progress or check for understanding or anything about that? Oh, great. Susan O'Neill said, thank you for the info about big ideas. That's what I wanted to see. Great. Um, any, 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 oh, that's great. Okay. Anyone, how are you, how are you checking for progress? No, no ideas. <laughs> It's a small group, so no pressure. No pressure. Ah, okay. Lucia said, 
I tell my students that through to show their work through Google Docs. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm really, I have to say, I'm personally really interested in, but I don't know a lot about because, oh, sorry, my camera's not on. I don't know a lot about. Uh, I, I, I want to know if students can do more than just type in Google Docs. Are they able to, to, because I've heard they can actually drop a video in as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure they can do that. Um, so I think that sounds like a really cool style to assess student um, thinking, you know, to assess thinking. Many of them do that, then I grade it and return their work back to them. Yeah, okay. So I think students can drop in a, um, a photo of their work, like they could write out their thinking and then they could show their work that way, take a picture with their cell phone or with their laptop, I guess, and then include that picture into their, drop a picture into their doc, um, a video of themselves explaining it into their doc. I'm pretty sure you can do that too. So there's a lot we could experiment with over the next whatever number of months. Um, but I think that's really going to be the issue is how can we assess, how can we, you know, tease out those misconceptions students are having and then monitor their progress. Now, in big ideas, you can do that partially. I mean, not the misconceptions part as much, but you can at least somewhat follow their, pro their progress just using the online platform, right? Because you can, you know, there's, it's instant feedback. Once they submit a, le uh, a problem set or a quiz or a test, then they get the results and you get the results, et cetera, et cetera. Ah, okay. So we have some feedback here. Okay, cool. Um, so Lucia says the picture is blurry when they turn it in. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. But the, the cam, cam scanner is the best way to take picture of their work. Cam scanner, is that an app up the internet or is that a built-in app? I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search for that. Cam scanner, cam scanner. Ah, turn your phone and tablet into a scanner. Oh, to scan things. Cool. Okay, cam scanner. I like it. So, so is that a separate it. application? Yeah, that looks like it's a separate application. Looks like you can download the app. Uh, is it free? I'm not sure if it's free. It's for your iPhone as well. That's an iPhone app. So if you don't have an iPhone, or you can have, if you have an Android or iPhone, yeah, or an iPad. But I wonder what we can use if the students just use their tablets. Hmm. Okay. Still looking for some perfect solutions, that's for sure. Oh, you got it for in your Android? Okay, cool. Okay. Maybe the way the kids show their clever badge could be a way that they take a picture using their Chromebook. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hey, I just realized it's one o'clock and uh, so time for us to head out. Um, thank you for joining us for this time. And I think that we, we've just gotten done with like a bunch of different um, presentations and attending presentations. I think we all are really looking forward to having some lunch. So everyone take care. I'm gonna stop the recording right now. Um, have a, a great break and take it easy. Don't, don't ever stress yourselves with all this. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording. Can we stop it? We can stop it. Yeah. There's the three dots at the bottom. Yeah. I have a cat in the hat.